Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Stevens in Texas. And this clip is not funny. It's actually very sad. But I'm showing you this clip because judges have to deal with stuff like this on a daily basis, more often than we know about. So that's the reason I'm showing it. It is not a funny clip. So it is educational, but it's not funny. So I'll let you guys watch. We now call 20 dash uh, 357. Yeah, come on up right there. No, there you go. 35717, uh, the state of Texas versus Angela Ashey. And she is represented by Ms. Mantellini. And the state's counsel is who? Mr. Laird, Judge. Let's see. 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 Okay, here it's, uh, and the prosecution is here. There is a motion to revoke unadjudicated probation that was filed on November 28th, 2023. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of this? Can we proceed in summary? Do you have your hand, Williams? I have a question. Yeah. Well, first of all, raise your right hand like that. Good girl. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any statements you make during this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Go lower your hand. What was your question? What does it mean to revoke? To take away. You won't to take away. There's a motion to take away your probation and then maybe place you in prison. Which is not good because it shows that you have uh, it's alleged that you have violated the requirements of probation, which keep you on probation and prevent you from having to go to prison. Uh, I would like to get a lawyer. That's her. I didn't ask for that lawyer. Are you able to hire somebody? Are you able to hire anybody? I think I could find a lawyer. No, do you, are you able to hire anybody? Well, am I, do I have the right? Do you have the money to hire somebody? I should. What do you, why do you, well, I would know, I know if I do or not, and should is not the answer. She's appointed to represent you because it's my understanding you are not able to hire an attorney. Where's all your money located? I'm talking to you. Where's your money located to hire somebody? And how much money do you have? I'm, re I'm required to ask that and you're required to answer it under oath. Understood. Well, you should know what's the answer. How much money do you have to hire a lawyer? If you don't, have enough. That's why she's here. We're moving forward and she's appointed. She's a trained professional and okay, competent. So if I and was you running, just, you if just, I was running for president, ma'am, you just interrupted the court when I was speaking. You're going to get a chance to speak. Just be rude. Don't be rude. We learned this in first grade. And she can't take down both of us speaking at the same time. She is by law probably the most important person in the room because am I bothering you or boring you? Am I boring you? Because you've got this fed up look that this is all boring. This is all important and it's your life. Your life. You're looking at, what, uh, up to 10 years in prison here. So this is important and you need to take it seriously and not look like you're bored. Okay, so let's don't speak over each other, number one. Number two, it's simple. Do you have the money to hire? It's my understanding you don't have money to hire. I, my wallet has been stolen two times. I know. Well, where is your money? Where can we find the money? That's, that's what I'm asking. My wallet has been stolen two times. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and I'm asking you, where is the money located? It's supposed to be in Community Bank, and I have a bank at Natchez. I'm sorry. I, I would. I have an. I only have two accounts. Commute. Where? Community and Natchez. Well, you'd be wrong because Community Bank is now Stellar Bank. It's, there is not a community bank here anymore. It's Stellar. That's, Did you know that? That's where my money was. Okay. Well, who has access to your mother? Other than you. Who has access to it? Does your mother have it or a relative or somebody? No. Well, I don't have any information other than the fact that you were indigent that is unable to hire a lawyer and she's 
you have a right to a competent attorney, which she is. All right, so, officer, Ms. Yes, yes ma'am. Mr. Judge. Yes. Uh, so, are you speaking on someone else's case other than Angela Ashy? Uh, who else might you be? Laura Costanza and Sarah Runyon. That's you? I was under babysitting uh, regime with, with um, children. Yeah. And she was smoking weed, drinking, bringing friends in the house. And yeah. as a math major, I realized she has three real children from her body with her husband that she married in college. And she was the one that was endangering children. So what's what's the point you're making? That has nothing to do really uh, that I'm aware of. You are on probation in this court. You know that. You know that. We okay, put you okay, on. Okay, I understood you. Hold then. on, hold on. We put you on probation in December of uh, 2021. You pleaded guilty to assault on a public servant, and then you were placed on probation for 10 years. This motion to revoke probation now that's been filed, the motion's been filed by the state, and they are requesting that your probation should be revoked because you failed to honor the terms that you promised to follow on probation, which were one. In this states, number one, you committed the offense of assault on or about November 23rd, uh, okay. uh, uh, 2020, November 9th, 2023 in Jefferson County, Texas. Number two, you failed to report to the probation office as required on August 2nd of 2020. I was in a hospital. Did you just interrupt? Oh, we just talked about I it. Like, a, let me finish. I was in a hospital. Hold on. I'm telling you what you're charged with and you're going to get to explain. Don't interrupt. I've got two more to go and then we'll get back to you. Okay. Just listen politely and quietly. Would you please answer yes or no? Answer me. What's the question? I can't understand you. Answer, am I? Then what's the question, lawyer? Ma'am, what is the what is the language you're used to receiving? Is it English? I I'm understand. Speaking slowly. To, I, but I All right. Also know Do you understand Spanish. what I just said? Is be polite. I, Don't interrupt. Okay. Number three. You provided a urine sample in July, which tested positive for methamphetamine. Math. Me methamphetamine. I'm a math major. Number four, you failed to provide verification of entering and successfully completing the anger management program as required. Those are the four violations. Do you understand? My therapist, the, the counselor, said I was getting a written um, excuse for anger management classes doing therapy with her. Your Honor, if I just may one more time, I would like to urge that she be re-examined by Dr. Perpon. We we discussed it once at our last hearing, and we were um, to be prepared to move forward on the motion of reprobation hearing today. But even since then, she's deteriorated deteriorated even more from what I can tell from her, from what I've read from the medical records from the jail and from. Um, uh, her responses to you, and I would ask that the court have her re-examined to see if she is competent to move forward today, and then also, uh, if necessary, she'll need to be examined to find out if she was had a defense at the time uh, the offense alleged in allegation number one. I would like another attorney. I would like to hire two real attorneys for you my case. Hire, you can hire them anytime you want. She is going to be your attorney until or unless you hire somebody that you choose. Okay, we have this report. Um, you said I could or cannot? You can. 
but I'm not going to hire them. You have to, but. Do you speak English, sir? Are you being rude? No, I'm really you're, asking. No, you are being rude, and you're going to be put in time out, like we have to do with children if you're going to act that way. So then. I'll put you out in back in the cell. You should be fired of your supreme justice. All right. In November of 21, she was analyzed and being confident. Yes. I mean, we've had her, but I see where well, there's another one in here. Let me look at this. And I remember she had she exhibited the same bizarre at responses that we thought would prompted us to get the analysis, and each of them came back. Uh, let me look. We do have present the so worker that was working with her, the one that is the judge um, position is here's one in twenty twenty. And this was Dr. Ed Rapon. And in 2020, she was being incompetent, not competent in this December of 2020. Then 21, she's being competent. I don't think that was Dr. Rapon doing that then. Dr. Rapon said I didn't need medication, and that was one of the only doctors that said I didn't need medication when they were trying to force me on medication. Then the Montgomery County Mental Health Treatment Facility uh, evaluated her in November of 21, the following year, and deemed her to be a competent person. Uh, let's see what the... Then, uh, finish here, I think. So, Just a minute. Okay. Just be patient, please. <laughs> she does have, uh, she's, they deemed her to have bipolar disorder. But was so if I, this is your father, then should I hand him the birth certificate? If that's not your father, then I shouldn't hand him the birth certificate. I'm not his father. Do you see anybody in the courtroom you know? My mom is supposed to be here. Oh, hello. That's your mom? That's my, that's my aunt. Yeah. That's my mother and that's my father. Okay. Said, is it my father, George? Yep. And my mother's dead. No. Okay, we have a diagnosis here by Dr. Rapon of psychotic disorder, untreated, and that's how he deemed her. Um, I'm not competent and we tried required mental health treatment. Yeah. If I could just give it what I'm going to do is go back to Dr. Grapon and ask him to reevaluate her since he's familiar with her and he has been her to be incompetent in the past needing treatment. And I think the court has heard enough uh, of her statement. So you're taking me off probation. Where she is uh, not paying attention, nor is she seems to be. Yeah, kind of holding a conversation with others. Have a month in jail if I probation. While on probation, she was being worked with MHMR. So, uh, her, the, so her daughter, Laura, does drugs and, uh, and drinks alcohol? They and have, I was a babysitter? Excuse me, what you're saying. And they had her on a wait for about four months to get into a long-term mental health facility. But then this event occurred with her MHMR worker, which caused, which triggered, of course, the, the motion to revoke. And so it's- Refresh my memory on the MHMR worker episode. She evidently was working with her as much as she could. I think seeing her two or three times a week, uh, would go pick her up, take her to MHMR. And on this last day, while they had her on a waiting list to get into a long-term health care, mental health care facility, there was an alleged uh, assault upon the MHMR worker, which uh, Miss Ashy denies. But um, that's that's what the and of course she naturally had to file a complaint based upon that, and that is the number one allegation in the motion to revoke. And um, the reason that she, oh, that's what the assault is. Yes, but the reason that she filed was because before that there were 
kind of some threats made by Ms. Ashley of kidnapping some children, and they were just concerned she was getting totally out of control. So. Okay. That's the allegation has... That's the assault, yes, sir. Right. Well, it's alleged as a violation of uh, probation. What does the uh, DA's office intend to do? Are they? Is that going to be filed on formally? The actual assault, I do not know if it's being filed formally. We do have an offense report. I did not see it in the computer. I've got to look and see. It should have been filed by now. But she does need help. And I think once Dr. Grappon sees her, he can determine that she does because they were planning on placing her in Rusk anyway. That was their that was their plan. But we need to come up with a long term plan this, once uh, we get his report. So when you There's, have uh, your uh, on, just, daughter pretending to be Angela Ashey and it's under Angela Costanza and that's your daughter Laura watching her and I'm Angela Ashey, yeah. then that's, um, what is that, blackmail? All right, hold on, really hold on, just <laughs> give us a second here. Just give us a second. So we've got uh, an assault and also this uh Methamphetamine, which is a serious offense. Yes. Where's that? Did anybody have an idea where that may have surfaced? She from? did address that with you when we were here before. That I know she felt like it made her think think more clearly. Yeah. But of course, it is a violation, and it is getting yeah. blocked. Yeah. Okay. Then I need to get my father a lawyer. All right. So okay. well, here's what we're going to have to do. Then is get. Uh, I'll ask Dr. Grappon to go out and evaluate uh, the defendant get back with us with a written report as soon as possible. Sir. Then we'll move from uh, there. He's a medical uh, physician as well. That's what's good about, him. that's why I like him. And he's just not a psychologist, he's a psychiatrist and has uh, medical abilities. So we'll get him to evaluate her and then upon that uh, receipt, then we'll get back into this hearing and and figure out you know, what needs to be done but none of us have that authority of expertise we gotta let dr Rupon get in this as soon as possible if you could ask him yes i'll call his office thank you then when i was just a witness i don't think how does that apply me to the case well, it just depends on the circumstances, ma'am, of how you were a witness and a witness of what particular event. That's the best I can answer. All right, you were back in custody. We're going to get Dr. Grappon to come visit you. Please cooperate with him, and we'll see you back soon, okay? Thank you. Is she taking some medicine right now? Is she? Uh, is there a diagnosis a prescription that she takes? Everybody's raising their hands. Uh, do y'all know? She's refusing. She's refusing to Jefferson County. Can't make her take it because she's an adult. Yes, ma'am. And they won't give it to her. Well, see what what happens is if she is if she uh, is involved with this allegation of assault, depending upon what this is, we may need to send her to a facility where it is where it is uh, mandated. Actually, so and, they're not. They don't you know. know I want to take my atomoxetine then. That's all. <laughs> so y'all don't do your job correctly. <laughs> you have a problem? Do your job right. Where's the jury? I don't think you're doing your job correctly. God bless her. Yes. Judge, you yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I've been dealing with this for 11 years with Angela. And all the acute care facilities that she's gone to can only keep her anywhere from four days up to a month. They told me over and over and as time has gone on, well, it's getting worse and worse. And well, I know. Maybe we can get her into risk. And we'll please, get you some, God, please. Um, but that's that's up to them too. You know, it's that's up to them. But Dr. Rapon, he's um, he's uh, my favorite. Uh, psychiatrist, we used him in the in the James Bird trials. Uh, he that's how I came to know him, and he became famous from those trials. And he is the leading psychiatrist in the area, and so he knows. And we're talking about mental illness that's that's uh, experts need to deal with. We don't 
they have the expertise. Yes, ma'am. She's destroyed my house. I gave all your pictures. Well, well, here's yeah, which well, it's she's ill. She's yeah. ill. She's she has a sickness that makes her uh, incoherent, and it causes harm, a threat of harm to others that she would otherwise, I'm sure, uh, she loves. Uh, and it's I'm sure it's difficult for y'all to see a, a Jekyll and Hyde personality change. Yeah, she was hit by a drunk driver when she was 16 in 2011, and two years later, well, what, what happened? What were her injuries from that? Her best friend was killed. Her best friend, no, was she injured? She Angela had injuries, but well, it wasn't did, bad. And Waylon, well, did, did uh, her, uh, did, her did her condition start from that period of time? It started it years later. Years later. Yeah. Her PTSD. No, she says you're, you're saying a few years later. A few years later, she okay. had allergic reaction to steroids, and the doctors had put her on for oh. uh, pneumonia. Well, maybe and something she like that. Remember everything from that accident. He hit her at 107 miles an hour. Their car was going 55. There was five kids in there. Shelby, her best friend since second grade, was sucked out the back of the window in his car, ricocheted. Angela's car flipped okay. three times, almost killed. Wow. Where'd that happen? Here in Beaumont. Here in Beaumont. Where? January oh, 3rd on Major Drive, January wow. 3rd of 2011. Waylon Thompson was the VA okay. on that. And it was Shelby who did that. Yeah. Angela doesn't know that the drunk driver only served 11 and a half years and he just got out not known. And that brings up the trauma. And every time she thinks that his family is running for her because she put him in prison. Well, she didn't. He did. He did. Yeah. But like I said, when she started talking about the kids, she tried to get my grandchildren first. It was me that. My well, she's 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 ill and and what we what we all hope for is that she can get treated effective effectively. Okay. Well, I hope you guys got something out of this clip. Um, I I really showed it because it's different because it's so different than what we all watch out you know every day. But it is very different, and I wanted to show you guys this. I hope. Um, you understand and can understand what the judge goes through trying to figure stuff like this out. But um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.